What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we got to talk about what happened at Night of Champions. Y'all know I got to give my thoughts and opinions on the show. Uh, shout out to everyone that was a part of the live stream. Uh, you guys were amazing. I know Dub wasn't there for the most of it. He was, you know, at, at his daughter's track meet. And then when he was able to show up, he had to take care of something important off camera. So that's why he missed the last half of the, the last match. But nevertheless, he would have been there if he could have, you know, but he had to take care of some family related things. So uh, I appreciate him for even just coming rushing all the way back home just to try to be a part of the of the show but hey man you guys were awesome and amazing in the chat and you know i appreciate y'all just showing up man so we got to talk about what happened on this show as you can tell i lost my voice so that usually means that's a good thing all right so let's let's go through the list of matches it's not even gonna take me long until we get to the last few matches but we're gonna go through i'm gonna talk about what happened you know you know just what happened in each match and you know my thoughts and opinions that the match was going on and we're gonna go through that and you know try to get this over with i'm not trying to take too much of y'all time all right so let's start with the world heavyweight championship tournament final seth rollins versus aj styles honestly this match i was hoping it would be a little bit better but it was enjoyable nonetheless um both of these guys are amazing in the ring so to see these guys go back and forth it wasn't a clear decisive win between these guys well uh, a decisive battle it wasn't seth rollins was coming you know had the advantage or aj had the advantage it, it kind of seemed even for the most most part one person would get in some great offense and the other person would counter with some great offense i did like the spot where um AJ Styles was able to reverse, hit a reversal, and put Seth Rollins in the pedigree. I thought that was a pretty cool spot. Um, I want to say at one moment, um, AJ uh, Seth Rollins dives outside the ring uh, through the ropes to hit AJ, but he ends up landing on his knee. They went with a uh, a uh, storyline injury, and pretty much AJ was working on Seth's knee, trying to uh, incapacitate him or whatnot and um it was it was really just seth trying to counter aj as much as he possibly could and i i really do appreciate that but ultimately i think a lot of us uh kind of predicted that uh seth rollins was gonna win this match uh i didn't have a problem with seth winning it even though yes it was kind of predictable but it you know it, it made sense seth has kind of been the workhorse uh guy for monday night raw and has been putting over a lot of people uh these past few years and have honestly had some of the best matches on monday night raw so i'm okay with him winning it'll be interesting to see what feuds he go through has going forward as the new uh champ new world heavyweight champ but the match was serviceable i was expecting it to be a little bit better maybe match of the night potentially but ultimately it wasn't it was still a solid match um, it was okay. I enjoyed it for what it was. And um, it was a solid opener. Looking forward to seeing what Seth does as the new World Heavyweight Champion. All right. So let's get into uh, Trish Stratus versus uh, Becky Lynch. Now, this match, it started off a little bit fast-paced. They were pretty much brawling. But it, it definitely slowed down in pace. It was a little sloppy at times. Um, there was it was points where they weren't connecting on their moves smoothly in transition. So it, it looked kind of sloppy. Other than that, it was okay. <laughs> it was okay. It, it's not something that I would go back and watch. I think the ending of the match is honestly what makes the match that much better. So there's a spot where when well, I even spot is a situation where trish is looking under the ring you're trying to figure out what she's looking under the ring the ref sees it becky lynch goes out there to try to get her from you know whatever she's doing under the ring or whatnot and that's when uh zoe starks the nxt uh call up comes out and hits her with her finishing move the ref doesn't see it because he's arguing with trish hits her with a finishing move and i keep messing it up is z 360. I keep saying 0 360, but it's Z 360. Hits her with the finishing move, puts her back in the ring, and Trish capitalized with the 1 2 3 pin. And Trish wins with the help of, I guess, someone she uh, enlisted uh, to help her in Zoe Starks. And what was a crazy visual 
is because she got hit with that brutal looking finishing move, Becky Lynch's nose legitimately was busted open. It reminded me of when Becky Lynch uh, ended up getting her nose broke by Nia Jackson. You had that infamous shot of her in the crowd with her nose broken, looking all badass, and that kind of started her mega push unintentionally. It gave me shades of that because now she's looking up the ramp. She's bleeding profusely because of that move. And honestly, that was a cool visual. I like that. I was originally one of them people that was hoping Becky would win. It'd be a one and done situation, but no, it looks like they're going to continue this. And I do see Lita getting involved to help Becky because Becky's in a two on one situation. So I do think Lita will get involved and we'll probably have a tag team match uh, with Lita and Becky Lynch versus uh, Trish and um, and Zoe Starks. In. And this is good to get Zoe Starks in a high profile women's feud so the crowd can get used to her and and you know it's, it's one of those type of things where crowd can get used to her and uh you know she can kind of get a little bit more exposure because she's had a few matches on monday night raw she didn't really get uh too much interaction honestly uh but it's one of those type of things where hopefully this gives her a little bit more uh to do and people get more familiar with her so match didn't really too much care for but the ending was great so i definitely enjoyed the ending the intercontinental championship match gunther versus mustafa ali um i'm gonna call him mustafa get a life or get a life ali get a life kid ali that's what his name is uh coined by brock up to this point in the show mustafa ali gunther this was very 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 good gunther definitely made mustafa ali look like he could actually win this match Shout out to him. He's always good with smaller opponents, making you believe they could actually win. But we all kind of knew Gunther was going to get the win here. Um, and he didn't have to cheat to do it. He did it legitimately clean, which I appreciate. And uh, Mustafa had a great showing, but we knew he wasn't going to win. But still, fun match. Gunther is making that Intercontinental Championship look so good, especially with the matches he's been having. So great match, enjoyable, up to the point of at this show. This was the best match of the night so far. All right, uh, let's talk about Oscar versus Bianca Belair. Um, it's not as good as the WrestleMania match, but honestly, this match to me, it, it, it just, I don't know, it wasn't bad. Like, by any means, they were putting on a, in ring wise, it, 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 it looked good, but at the same time, I don't know, I just, I wasn't really as invested as I wanted to be. Um, it, it kind of fell flat. The crowd was more so pro Oscar. You know, a lot of people were chanting for Oscar, and Oscar's gonna kill you, and booing Rhea, uh, uh, Bianca Belair, which was another surprising situation. So I don't know. Uh, at the beginning of this match, I'm thinking at some point they gotta turn Bianca Belair heel, but <laughs> the way this match ends. It's not the case. So I'm going to kind of skip to the ending because that's really where most of the, the exciting stuff happens. Um, I want to say, so Oscar tried to hit her with the mist in the corner, but she dodged it. Uh, Oscar tried to hit Bianca Bella with the mist, but she dodged it. So Oscar, once again, while uh, Bianca and the ref is not looking, she goes to the edge of the ring and she sprays the mist. So she spits the mist on her fingers. So when Oscar picks, I mean, when Bianca picks up Oscar for the KOD, she wipes it on her eyes. And now Bianca can't see, kicks, kicks Bianca in the back of the skull for the one, two, three. And that's crazy. The one, two, three, just like that. She loses because Oscar cheated. And here's the, here's the crazy thing. The people were chanting. It wasn't too many boos. It was it, it was a, a real surreal situation. I, I I think people are okay with it. It was kind of a you know I mean it makes sense because Oscar is a heel. Uh, I didn't really have a problem with her losing. I think her losing at WrestleMania probably would have been the better choice or whatnot. But nevertheless, it was it, I was not expecting that. She's the only person that lost at Night of Champions like that lost their championship. She's the only person, one of the longest reigning. Uh, women's champions of all time finally lost to Oscar because Oscar cheated. So the ending was shocking. I don't have a problem with Oscar being the champ as a heel champion, 
The question is what they're going to do here. I'm sure this feud is not over between Bianca and Asuka. Uh, and maybe they give Asuka a long, lengthy title reign. We will see. I don't know how this is going to play out. But I was very surprised by it. So it wasn't a bad thing. I was just very surprised that this actually happened the way it happened. But it made sense storyline-wise. And uh, it, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see. But I am happy that Asuka is finally champ so we'll see what they do with her but i do not think bianca is going heel anytime soon this kind of confirmed it they're gonna keep her a baby face because they want her to you know you know try to i guess be on the baby face hunt again and uh the baby face title chain uh title uh opportunity hunt again granted i don't think bianca needs to win it back but we'll see how it goes going forward Rhea Ripley versus Natalia. There's not much to talk about. Rhea Ripley proceeds to give Natalia the beats. Natalia barely got any offense in. One, two, three. That's it. I'm not even mad with that. Because I honestly, I think the Oscar and Bianca, well, I think the Trish and, uh, Trish and Becky Lynch match was a little bit too long. I think they could have shortened that up. To get to the finish oscar and bianca i feel like it was a little bit too long could have shortened that up to get to the finish this one five minutes one i was okay with it still not a, it wasn't really a match but i don't even know why natalia was even out there in the first place and she got squashed on her birthday happy birthday natalia get a life <laughs> like brock says get a life natalia nah happy birthday to you but yeah yeah there's nothing to talk about that. That's not a match anyone will remember. Real one, as expected. Squash fashion. Okay, cool. Go to the next one. Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes. Now, I was expecting Cody damn near to get semi-squashed here. I was. But this exceeded my expectations. Now, I have seen some people complain on Twitter that it kind of ruined. it. You, you, it they're, they're, they're giving... Cody, this Superman hero like uh, uh, presence, and it's like, um, I guess you can say that because he was able to fight back. But the one thing that they did try to make believable in this whole situation, because Cody's basically coming out there as a one armed individual, is that the cast was reinforced with titanium. So, in essentially, my man is out there. Uh, with the Winter Soldier treatment. He got the vibranium arm. <laughs> That's pretty much what they went with. The cast is so hard and tough that he can, you know, it'll be used potentially as a weapon. Michael Cole didn't say that, but once he said it was infused with titanium, I was like, oh, he's going to use it as a weapon. And that was really the only way you was able to make somewhat believable that Cody could somehow get some type of offense in. Because I honestly thought he was going to get killed and murdered tonight. But he didn't. He fought back. There was a lot of good moments. A lot of teasing moments. Like Cody could get the job done. Like it was. It was. It was. It was when once he started using the arm. I was like, okay, Cody's trying to fight his way out of there. They really made you somewhat believe maybe he can get it done. Now, well, I gotta take me some water. Hold on. Hold on. Mm. Now here's the crazy thing. They went with the, the ultimate babyface spot. There was a point where Cody tried to roll Brock up into the same type of role he did at Backlash, but it didn't work. So he tried it again, tried to roll him up on his shoulders, but then he ended up rolling over too far. Now Brock is in a position where, in a position where he, can't, he can't get out of it. Cody can't get out of it, so he has to scoot to get to the ropes. He's able to get to the ropes just barely. They went with the traditional passing out spot. They did it twice. He was able to get to the ropes the first time. Uh, he was able to hit the crossroads uh, uh, three times on Brock. He wasn't ultimately able uh, to keep Brock down. Brock hit one F5, and then he got him in the same, uh, same I believe, uh, uh, the Kamora lock. He got him in the lock again. Or whatnot. This time he was too far away from the ropes. And Cody pretty much passes out from the pain. They weren't going to have Cody tap out. They weren't, they weren't going to have him quit. So I was like, okay, well, he just passes out from the pain. Which I, I kind of expected. And then Brock proceeds to have the hold on. Like He was he just wasn't going to let it go or whatnot. And then he decides to let it go. So it's just one of those things where 
I actually surprisingly enjoyed the story a little bit more in this match only because I came in thinking Brock is going to kill him. <laughs> and I was concerned on how bad Cody was going to get mangled. But this time, Cody was able to somewhat use his disadvantage as an advantage. I know some people complaining like, oh, I'm just tired of this this overcoming the odds baby face stick i get it i get it but i don't think this was what some people were quoting as a super cena situation i don't think it's that me personally i don't, I don't feel like it was that because super cena would have won this this in my opinion was not a win situation because we knew he wasn't going to win but you didn't want him to go out there and just get completely um completely destroyed so um i'm okay with how this played out I, uh, me personally i'm okay with this and honestly this was a very fun match uh and i'm looking forward to seeing i guess what they do with the next match i'm sure they're gonna have one more match i was pitching maybe an i quit match because we know cody's not gonna want to say i quit and we know brock lesnar i don't think he's ever said i quit so that would be interesting if they did have their final match. It's an I quit match. I think that would be cool. Let me know what type of matches would y'all want them to be or want them to have as their last match. And then we get to the main event, the tag team championship match between Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns and Solo. And this was easily match of the night. Oh my God. Roman talking his trash per usual. Sammy coming out there to a just a great standing ovation. The crowd went good. Crowd had been pretty lively during the Brock and Cody match in the Gunther and Mustafa Ali match, and uh, a little bit for the uh, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles match. But the crowd really turned it up. I mean, they really turned it up for this match. Kevin Owens, Sammy Zayn, this crowd was excellent. Roman was getting booed out the building. It was great. Roman talking his trash, saying he's going to be new tag champs. And we've seen their type of matches. Sammy is very good at selling. There's going to be a point in the match where Kevin Owens is going to get knocked out the ring. And Sammy is going to get the beats. And there are going to be some heel tactics. The ref's not going to see it. It was great. Have we? Is it kind of formulated when Roman Reigns matches involving the ref getting hit? Yeah, we knew, but we knew that was going to have to be one of the ways to get Jimmy and Jay involved. So, I just got to talk about this because we're, we're going to get straight to the nitty gritty here. There was a man, when we, when we get to the point where the ref gets speared into oblivion, right? He's knocked out. At this point, Kevin Owens, this was so cool. So, Sammy tries to hit, well, Sammy hits Roman with the Superman punch. Then Sammy's going for the spear, but then he gets hit with the Superman punch. And then Kevin Kevin Owens ends up hitting Roman with the spear, starts beating the crap out of him, takes him out the ring, throws him to the ring step. He's moving furniture off the table. He, he gets Roman on the table. Oh, Ro Kevin Owens about to send my boy Roman to the gulags. Usos come out of nowhere. Usos are beating up Kevin Owens, giving him the beats. Then... The Usos get in the ring, start get beating up uh, Sami Zayn. They go for the stereo kicks, and they accidentally kick Solo. So Roman comes to. He sees the Usos out there. He sees that they kick Solo. Roman's pissed. He gets in the ring. He starts disre he, he He disrespects Jimmy. He pushes him in the face. Then, he, then Jay's trying to calm him down, and he's like, you touching me? You touch me, why you touch me? He pushes him in the face. He's like, I mean, we ain't day ones. You all y'all ain't day ones no more. And then uh this is when Jimmy, he, he he's no longer Jimmy no more. He's Hemi Uso at this point. Roman Reigns turns around and gets super kicked for his troubles. The crowd goes insane. I go insane. You guys in the chat at the time go insane beautiful he's him and you so at this point on jay's like what you doing what you doing jimmy's like bro we we are the ones 
You know what I'm saying? He's basically like, bro, I'm not taking this from Roman no more. We are the ones. We the day ones. The Usos are. Not him. And he told them, I'm doing something you should have did a long time ago. They made sure they picked that audio up. I'm, he, Jimmy's telling, well, Hemi, <laughs> Hemi Uso is telling Jay, I'm doing something you should have did a long time ago. And he kicked him one more time because the crowd chanted him one more time. And he kicked him straight in the face right out the ring. Oh, it was beautiful. And Jay's like trying to figure out what to do. And Jimmy's like, come on, bro. Let's go. Let's go, bro. So they're walking up the ramp. Solo gets back in the ring. Ends up uh, getting the stunner for his troubles. And then ends up eating a halluva kick. And then the ref comes to, or I believe it's another ref. And for the one, two, three, as Sami Zayn pinned Solo Sokoa. And that's how it ends. And it was great. And you see a shot of Roman just in disbelief. You see a shot of Sami Zayn holding up the titles, talking trash to Roman. Roman doesn't know what to say or what to do. Like, he's just talking his trash. You can't have these. These are ours. And you see Solo. I mean, you see the Usos looking down the ramp at Roman. Oh, chef's kiss. 10 out of 10 storytelling. This was great. This was great. This was truly fantastic. I enjoyed this so damn much. And now I'm looking forward to SmackDown because we're going to have the thousand day celebration. But it's going to be some BS now. Because now the thousand day celebration is not just going to be everybody celebrating Roman. It's safe to say Jimmy's done. Jimmy, he's over it. And the question is, at what point will Jay finally say, screw it, I'm done with you too, Roman? That's what we're waiting on. Because Jay is still in this, like, what's going on? But Jimmy's over it. And I once again, I said this yesterday on uh, my SmackDown uh, review of the, of the Jimmy Uso segment. I said this yesterday. Jimmy was always reluctant in the beginning to join the Uso, uh, join Bro or Roman. He was reluctant to acknowledge him because he initially thought this, this didn't make sense. So it's coming full circle that Jimmy is the one to say, you should, I'm doing something you should have did a long time ago. And for him to kind of be over this bloodline situation, it's very good how it's come full circle with that. So now we're waiting on Jay to finally align himself. I do think they're probably going to set up a Roman Reigns solo Sokoa versus Jimmy and Jay Uso because Jimmy and Jay, they accidentally kicked Solo. So Solo, he may be upset about that. He's probably going to be upset about that. So I do think that's what they're going with. Roman and Solo versus Jimmy and Jay Uso. I think that's how it's going to go down. I think that's how it's going to go down. And maybe at that point, maybe Solo will come to his senses because they're. I can see them maybe beating up on them. And then Solo comes to his senses because he's like, bro, that's my family. I'm not about to do that to them. And maybe Solo turns on Roman. Now, that would be good. That would be good because now Roman's truly going to be almost by himself at the pretty much going to be by himself so we'll see how that plays out but i do think that's where they're going towards the future but other than that this was a solid show um it could have been better the women's matches unfortunately didn't hit uh the, some of the ending for the matches were pretty dope i think but for the most part they didn't really hit like i was expecting to but uh overall it was a decent show uh like i said on my on the uh live stream i gave it a eight out of ten um uh, Gunther Mustafa Ali match in uh, the Intercontinental Championship match was great. Brock Lesnar versus Cody was great. Uh the World Heavyweight Championship tournament final match, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles, that was pretty good. And the tag team championship match, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Roman Reigns, and Solo Sokoa was Chef's Kiss fantastic, man. This was overall a decent show. It was eight out of ten. I enjoyed it. Um, there's a lot of good matches on there that's worth your time watching if you missed it, man. So comment down below. 
let me know what you rate the show on a scale of one to ten what was your favorite match what was your least favorite match and what are you looking forward to going forward on monday night raw and friday uh, friday night smackdown this upcoming week but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on our channel road to 150k now i'm sitting here on this video youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one